Hi, I'm Gary Bounton and this is another ZaraZone TV tutorial at ZaraZone.com. This month, April, I've got a short but very interesting one for you. I'm going to show you how to manually create a diffuse, very elegant floor shadow in an illustration. I'm sure you already know how to create a sharp edge shadow, it's just a silhouette with reduced opacity. And a soft edge shadow like this can be created with the shadow tool. But this month, I'm going to show you how to create a diffuse shadow. The edges aren't sharp, they're not soft, they're rough. To begin this month, go to zarazone.com forward slash tutorials. Scroll down the page, click on the Downloads button to download this month's zip archive, unpack it on your system, and get ready to load it in Zara. Now with the Ellipse tool, create a black ellipse and put it below the uh, pinball object here. Press Control shift b to put it behind. And then with the ellipse tool, drag another one and it's going to go on top. Click it a second time to get the skew rotate handles and skew it like that. So now we have a reflection of the shadow. And with the transparency tool, click drag the slider on the info bar up to about 60% and do the same for the uh, shadow object. I want you to choose the Live Effects button, click New, Distortion Filter, Diffuse. The Diffuse dialog box appears on screen. I want you to drag the horizontal diffusion and the vertical to about 11 to 15. And as you can see here, that's a very nice diffuse shadow. Now up on the info bar, there's a resolution for this effect and by default it's at 96. Now you see if you increase it, you change the effect. Go back to 96, we kind of like that one. Although the resolution's low, the effect is good. Now I think we can do better than the diffuse look. Instead of it looking grainy around the edge, let's make it look lumpy. With the Live Effects tool chosen, click New, choose Soften Filter, Gaussian Blur. In the Gaussian Blur dialog box, drag the slider up to about 6 or 7. Now it looks lumpy, that's pretty good. The shadow's reflection into the pinball needs these two filters also, but instead of going through the process again, drag and drop a copy of the floor shadow in rotation mode, use the skew handle, then scale it, and as you can see, over the uh, pinball object, the shadow looks pretty good. I'm going to scale that a little bit more, and voila! One last thing you might want to do is to duplicate the floor shadow again, scale it a little bit, and then put this underneath the reflection shadow. And what you have is sort of a Hall of Mirrors effect, a reflection of the shadow of the reflection. Have a ball, and I'll see you next time at 